crew. Our project so far has been the funnest thing ever. We've got our Power Fist 212 mounted in here. More importantly, we have to put some brakes on this thing, a chain on the other side, and build a gas tank, or it's not even gonna move. So make sure you subscribe to see all the goodness, and let's get to it. Whee! I'm moving. I hit the bandsaw. Let's do this in levels of importantness. Is that a word? Top of the list, gas tank. Need that, obviously, to move. Two, chain. Need that, obviously, to move. Throttle cable. Need that to move. And then brakes down at the bottom because we don't really need those things. I didn't really anticipate having to make my own custom tank, but I kind of want it underneath the, this bar right here. Just don't know if this is gonna be enough fuel. I think it should be. This isn't a high horsepower engine. Right? This is kind of my idea. I have no idea how I'm gonna mount it yet or where the filler neck is gonna come in. Now we should probably figure out the volume of this if we wanna see how much fuel this thing is gonna hold. So what I have in my hand right here is a tape measure. This is foreign to a lot of you guys, I know. But um, there's two sets of increments on this one. Uh, there's female inches in the top up here and there's male inches in the bottom one down here. So we're working with right around 25 inches for all you men out there. I know my, my female population's uh, low, probably like 1%, but for the females, it's right around 10 inches. So 25 inches for the men, 10 inches for, th for the women. Do some quick maths on the internet here. It says it's about a one liter tank, which is a quarter gallon-ish, a little more than a quarter gallon. So you're not gonna go very far, but it's uh, gonna look cool at least. So all I have, unfortunately, is a three and a half inch hole saw, which is gonna make our ends too big. And so I'm gonna have to do some weird work around with the lathe afterwards, hopefully, to get these things to fit. I didn't even hit myself in the face this time. So proud of myself. Ah, what a mess I've made. So this is what I mean by our caps are a little bit on the big side. You can see this lip right here. So I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and bolt like a uh, quarter inch bolt through this hole because I think that's what size it is. And then I'm going to put this in the lathe and hopefully I can turn it down a little tiny bit without ruining it. I think I'm being hopeful right now. This might take a while, but it's turning out a lot better than expected. That actually worked out better than planned, I think. They are going to work fine, but before we weld the end caps on, we actually have to put spots for bung holes. One for feeding the fuel, one for a vent somewhere up here, and then one to fill it. So three bung holes first. Another sad day in the race car world. I'm actually going to steal my coolant overflow from the race car so I can seal the cap to put on our, I'm doing a lot of part stealing lately. I've heard about this trick before, but I've never done it for myself. So what you do is you take a hole saw that's going to be the one that you want to cut with, but obviously I have nothing to pilot my center hole with. So what I'm gonna do is I screw this one onto the chuck thingamajig first, and then I take one that's the size of the inside of this piece, which is this one, and I screw that on the inside of this, And now the inner one should center itself on that piece and then the outer one should cut. But I do have to cut the little bit out of the inside hole. Let's see how that goes. Well, besides that one little hiccup, that worked flawlessly. Now we're just gonna chuck that in the lathe to get it nice and smooth on the outside there and then we got our, our, oh, I'm actually shocked how well that worked. Thanks, internet. Don't be fooled. This might not look like real science, but there's some real NASA science going on right here. We got sticky tape holding the pipe in place, and then we got sticky green tape holding our piece in place, and that's where our filler's gonna mount, right there. So I have this held up so I can get a tack weld on this thing, and then I can 
pull it off and completely weld it up. So we're gonna put the filler on this side, probably the vent on this side with a hose that just runs up and uh, mounts somewhere up here higher than the tank. And then we have to put a bunghole in the bottom as well before we cap it off. And then that's kind of what we're gonna have there. I'm not sure why I always get so nervous welding aluminum, but uh, you know, it didn't come out too bad. We work on a little bit more consistency and a little less stop and goes, but for the most part, it'll hold fuel. So without trying to bore you too much with it, this is the finished product here. As you can see, I welded the front and the rear plates on. This is our fill neck on this side. I'm probably just gonna hose clamp it to this piece, to be honest. Um, the feed is down here. We welded a bung in the bottom there. And then the vent is actually on this side. So we have to put a fitting here and then just run a hose um, probably somewhere up around here just to get it height so it has somewhere to vent to the tank. Here we are for Kyle's tech tip of the day. We're gonna be a little bit middle class fancy here today. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this hose clamp, I'm gonna wrap it around this thing. See how far we can go. So it's gonna tighten to about here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape from here all the way back to here. So it doesn't look like a clamp and it looks like a professional bracket instead of being really ghetto like I am. Dang, I'm fancy. One more time. Do you know what? That's good enough for me. We could always come back and cut these hose clamps a little bit there so they don't look as dumb. Right now, I'm just gonna leave it because I wanna move on to getting the throttle put on and the chain put on. That way we can probably test drive this thing to be honest. Now because we have one inch handlebars and I don't want to spend a ton of money on like Harley throttle cable stuff because it's really expensive, I did end up breaking. I did end up breaking this one trying to pry it open some more to fit over. So that's garbage. But we do have the Yamaha one here which looks like I can probably Dremel out a little bit of that cup and then a little bit of this cup and then I can just adapt the cable that was supposed to come on that one on to this one and hopefully that'll work. I think just for testing, that's going to be fine. It doesn't move at all and it'll work. So I'll hook up our cable from here down to here. I'm still not even sure how all this works. I know that the governor and shit is in here, but it's like this closes the throttle plate and then this opens it, but this is really stiff and it feels like it needs an extra spring. And uh, I'll read the instruction manual, I guess. And I'm not really one for reading instructions, but I might have to this time. All right, so after watching a YouTube video, we got our throttle linkage hooked up, as you can see. Ooh. We had to take out a little wavy washer in here to get the stiffness out of the throttle position piece. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the stock exhaust for now, just cut it off and have a tiny little straight pipe on it. And then we're gonna use the stock air filter as well, just for now, uh, because it does fit in there, it just obstructs where your leg is gonna go. But I cannot emphasize how much fun I'm having for how little this thing costs. Let's just say roughly the wheels and tires cost me a little bit and then the piping cost me a little bit. I'm probably in the range of five or $600 maybe. You could probably do it cheaper and you don't have to use a tubing bender. You could have did this all with straight pipe. It might not look as like sleek and cool as this one, but 
you could have did most of this with straight pipe. So I always encourage everybody, get a welder, get a grinder, go have some fun. So we're gonna put some oil in it, some fuel in it, the air box, the exhaust, and we're gonna fire this thing up. We're gonna go ahead and put some C16 in this thing because you know we're wild and it has to smell good, but more importantly, it's the only fuel we have here right now. <laughs> it's blue! Why would they make the spout so all the fuel won't come out? Silly. We're fueled up, we're oiled up, we're aired up, we're exhausted up, we're molded it up. Let's see if it'll fire up. bearings real quick let's take it outside in minus bajillion and see if it'll actually go on the snow it's colder than heck right now in Canada, so let's see how this goes i got it here we don't have that much fuel in it but i'm just gonna put the camera somewhere i don't know here you go watch me have fun got my welding gloves as winter gloves because i'm middle class fancy like that I think we're out of fuel, so I'm gonna buy some fuel real quick. Oh. <laughs> it's loud. Yeah. Well, it's straight piped right now. It's like I did to your You're daughter. You're not putting the muffler right now. <laughs> you straight piped my daughter? <laughs> I'm gonna put a muffler on it. What the fuck, man? Go, guys! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this thing, awesome. this thing pokes you in the ass. <laughs> All right, it's far too cold to be like actually out and filming. One thing, the exhaust fell off, the little temporary piece I made, but it was burning my ass anyways. I just did it because I wanted to drive it right now before the sun went down. So that piece fell off, so it's just pointing at you now. There's something leaking in the carburetor, which is super, super weird because this is a brand new engine, but it works pretty good. It's pretty decent. The bars need to be fixed. I need to put a brake on it. And other than that, maybe take it apart and get it powder coated. That'd be pretty cool. It parties. It parties. I can't believe the... it parties hard. <laughs> the coolest like, pit dry vehicle. Dry pavement? This is going to be terrifying. Oh man, it's, it's supposed to do 30 miles an hour. Oh, this is cold. See you guys back at home. Now, it is leaking a little bit of fuel and I don't know why. I don't know if our throttle is a little bit tight. No, it shouldn't be. But it was leak, like, yeah, it's leaking a ton of fuel when I turn the fuel on here to the point that it's What's going on there? Someone explain that to me because this is a brand new engine. It's like even leaking at the bottom here. As you can see, this thing just spins. It's a little bit wild in the snow. It doesn't really go anywhere. It drifts pretty good. It's fun, but it is minus 10 Fahrenheit out right now, which is freezing. And it wasn't fun at all to be outside. My fingers were getting cold. My face is getting cold. But now you can see why I'm not too much in a hurry to uh, test out our turbo 660 Raptor lawnmower over here because it's not going to do anything. Now our frame is gonna melt off. It's gonna be a little bit rusty, I think, cause we took it out in the snow and when it snows, it melts and I'm bare. It's gonna be rusty a little bit. We can either clean it off and paint it or clean it off and uh, get it powder coated, which would be super, super cool. But I had so much fun with this build. And like I said, anybody can do this in their own garage. You just need some pipe, a welder and a grinder. You don't even need like a TIG welder. You can use a MIG welder or a stick welder. Just go out there, have fun. You can get all these parts at your local like Princess Auto or Harbor Freight. It's a good time. Every subscriber counts, so make sure you're subscribed. Peace easy, get that V.